Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zikang Chan, the expert tutor of Advanced Performance Management, APM. This video will discuss one of the topics in the syllabus of APM, Environmental Management Accounting. The discussions of these topics will be made reference to the official websites of ACCA, that's including Study Hub, Chapter 6, Section 6.3, technical articles, which students will be able to get the full set of the articles by going into the website on the following link. Thirdly, there are ranges of questions in the recent examinations from the practice platform pertaining to environmental management accounting, and you are required to give it a term on the questions before looking at the model answers. In this part of the video, we will be first discussing the fundamentals of traditional management accounting system adopted by most business organizations. Then it tells us what should the businesses do now given the deteriorating physical living environmental conditions nowadays. Thirdly, how will this topic be tested and appear in the APM examination? One of the traditional roles of a traditional management accounting system that adopted by many business organizations, manufacturing business for instance, as shown in these pictures, it is to allow the business organizations to capture and understand and quantify ranges of costs incurred, not to mention all direct costs and indirect costs. Alternatively, it is termed overhead, are the typical types of cost categories that we see in most business organizations. The discussions of this video is focusing mainly on overheads, whereby ranges of overheads such as indirect material costs, indirect label costs, as well as indirect expenses are the common one. And do you realize that among all the indirect expenses, they will also be including ranges of cost pertaining to wastewater processing, wastewater treatment. And it also includes the cost in handling the noises, the dissatisfactions among the public as a result of causing physical pollution to the living environment in the business activity. All these costs are traditionally hidden under indirect expenses and hence under overheads, whereas these costs are physically relating to environment. Such costs are therefore considered as the hidden environmental costs. With a lacking of a transparent disclosure on such costs, try imagine how would the management team be able to show the level of attention to be placed on managing and reducing such kinds of costs. The failure of doing so may have brought up to a long-term consequences, such as erosion to share prices due to mismanaging and underestimating the significance of environmental costs. Not only the value it's eroded that affecting the shareholder interest, but also a damage that has created and causing pollutions to our physical living environment that ultimately lead to climate changes. It's another inevitable damages that causes as a result of negligence on understanding the impact of environmental footprint as a result of business activity. These demonstrate the deficiency of traditional management accounting system. With such deficiency, what should the business do in order to strike a balance in the long term, not only to take care and safeguard the financial objectives of the firm, but also to safeguard the living environment and ensuring a sustainable future of the planet Earth. How are we going to do that? That is obviously the key questions of modern businesses nowadays. And to answer these questions, these are among all some key changes that expected among businesses nowadays. 
Not to mention how important the 7S model as suggested by McKinsey, but rest assured, all the seven components of the S's will need to be changed and re-engineered. And also, with the continuous development on new technology, which is supposed to be greener and more environmental friendly, all this will be contributing to strike a balance on the above objective as mentioned. And of course, not to mention, many other initiatives and efforts will come into places as well. In this part of video, the attention will be discussed mainly on one of the changes in the Sabbath, namely the development and the changes in accounting and reporting systems. As we all know, there are two broad types of reporting systems that require by business organization. The former, the external reporting, it's mainly catered for disclosing and making aware to the external stakeholders, such as investors and regulators, to be well aware of what is happening in the business activities that took place in the past. We also need to have the latter, which is the internal reporting that drawing the attention to the management team of the firm on the way to move forward in managing all kinds of activity, including managing environmental related matters. In the internal reporting development, the aim is obviously to try to increase the transparency and understanding on environmental related activity and environmental related information that management teams should be well aware. These information would include not only physical, but also financial aspect of it. How are we to make such improvement on the content and quality of internal reporting? Here is the answer. The Environmental Management Accounting System. The EMA is considered as a complementary to the traditional management accounting system. Why do we say so? Because the EMA is used mainly to pick up, identify and quantify or estimate the value of environmental related financial information, in particularly costs. And finally, it is to help the business organizations to classify and to analyze ranges of environmental cost information. These emphasis is therefore placed onto the reporting of these two information, quantity, that's including activities, as well as financial value, in particular, the cost arising relating to environmental related activities. Let's take a look at how are we to pick up this information by understanding three main techniques in the syllabus. Firstly, input, output analysis. The rationale of such analysis is to believing in what goes in must come up. The quantity of input that's including all sorts of material inputs that will be equal to the summation of the quantity of different types of output, such as finished goods, scrap, as well as waste, in particular, the third one. These will allow the businesses' organizations to be aware the volume of waste created that would contribute mainly to the environmental footprint. With the linkages of financial costs incurred in the input by allocating this cost to all sort of output, that will allow the business to understand the value of costs incurred pertaining to the waste. These costs are clearly considered as environmental costs. That's how input-output analysis help to provide such information. Here comes the second approach and techniques, the environmental activity-based costing, which originating from ABC framework. Given the causes and effect relationship as stipulated in ABC, the environmental ABC would ultimately be able to provide the findings on costs pertaining to environment, which is in simple environmental costs, that divided into two categories the environment-related costs and the environment-driven costs. 
The former is mainly referring to costs incurred in maintaining a team of people, a team of workers, or a department that is trying to safeguard and monitoring the compliance, the safeguarding of the physical environment. Whereas the latter of the costs are like waste processing costs, wastewater handling costs, etc. These are the costs that are driven mainly on the environmental driven activities. Third, and lastly, life cycle costing. It's another technique that you have learned in other parts of the syllabus a while ago. In the life cycle costing, it is mainly highlighting ranges of cost arose throughout the ranges of the life cycles of the products, right from the cradle to the grave. In this part of the discussion, the life cycle costing approach is to highlight the ability to capture all the life cycle costs that arose from multiple period, which including the environmental cost that arised over different stage of the product life cycle. These environmental costs are captured as part of the life cycle cost. That is how it makes such costs to be transparent based upon life cycle costing. With the usage of the three techniques as discussed, how are we able to disclose such costs in a clear manner? That it's all about the way to analyze, the way to classify the costs. There are two main approaches engaged for such purpose. The first approach is being brought up by the US Environmental Protection Agency. In the agency's discovery, environmental costs is suggested to be broken down into four main categories. Conventional costs, hidden costs, contingent costs, image and relationship costs. You are strongly advised to take a look at the study hub's content as well as the article to understand the meaning of it so that you will be able to handle the questions that ask you to classify costs given in the exam questions to each of the four categories accordingly. Other than the four types of environmental costs as suggested by the agency, the second approach of analyzing such costs, it's similar to that of the quality cost analysis that you have learned in other parts of the syllabus. Under the quality cost analysis, there are two main categories. The conformance costs, they're made up of prevention and appraisal, in other words, detection cost. Non-conformance cost is another category of quality cost that made up of internal and external failure costs. Guys, try to imagine, these costs can also be applied to analyze ranges of environmental costs. Not to mention all, penalty and fines as a result of breaching of environmental law is a common cost that found in many businesses nowadays. By using the first approach, these penalty and fines are likely to be classified as hidden costs, mainly because these costs are usually classified and high under overheads. Whereas, adopting the second approach, this cost is clearly an item of non-conformance cost. And the non-compliance issue has brought up to the attention of external party like regulator that trigger the fine. That is clearly an external failure cost. With the clear analysis of such costs, this information will be applied in the following roles of management accounting. Planning decision-making, and performance measurement. These roles place a vital element in taking part in activities such as budgeting, pricing, investment appraisal, as well as designing of KPI. And all this made up part of the performance management of modern businesses that it strives towards a greener physical environment. So guys, that's all for the introductions of EMA. Now it's time to take a look at how 
environmental management accounting systems be appear in the APM examination? Here is one of the following examinations questions. Before listening to the following part of the video, you are highly encouraged to glance through the following questions on your own and come up with some of the answer plan and try to match up with what I'm going to tell you in a short while by glancing through this video. So here are some background on the layout of the number of exhibit and appendix in these questions. And these are some of the breakdown on the content of each and every of the exhibit as shown on the screen. And finally, these will be the requirements. That is where we're going to start from. It is clearly there are two tasks required in the questions. Task A, it is to respond to the work requested by the CFO pertaining to EMA. And task B, it's matter of life cycle costing. And these are all the terms that we had discussed in the earlier part of this video. Guys, if you have spent some time to glance through what is in this content of the company as the case, you will notice company average. It's clearly involved in the mining industry on gas extractions from underground. Part of the process in the extractions of the gas, it's called fracking. That's triggered a lot of voices from the public which believe that causing a physical damage on the physical environment. As a result of that, there's a newly recruited CFOs of this company that's come into place that looking into ways to settle down and address the matters pertaining to the impact on the physical environment. As far as the EMAs, as tasked in Part A of the requirement is concerned, you can see there are two matters that you need to address in Part A of the requirement. Firstly, it is about the way to classify, the way to group the environmental cost that is given in the appendix one, according to the following heading: prevention cost, detection or appraisal cost, internal failure, and finally external failure cost. Guys, where have you seen and come across this kind of name before? This is clearly one of the approach in analyzing the environmental cost according to the principles of quality cost analysis as discussed earlier. So Apart from these headings of the cost classifications given, here are your tasks. You need to justify the way that you classify and allocate each and every cost. And then you have to determine the value of these costs under each of the four categories as relevant. Well, that is a fairly straightforward task, I would say, for part A of the requirement. What the real challenge comes into, it's about your advice to the company on how the consideration on such environmental related information will help to manage the performance of average other than just identifying and managing the cost. So you have to talk about a broader scope of application, just like the earlier part of the video highlighting. How would such awareness of environmental related information appear and apply into planning, decision making, performance measurement? These are the typical way to relate the fundamental knowledge I discussed earlier in responding to part A. And looking at the second requirement that is pertaining to life cycle costing, where again, spend some time, guys, to take a look at all the stories given, and here come the task. The CFO has come across the techniques named life cycle costing. And here are your tasks. You have to explain the benefits of using the life cycle costing in managing the performances on the new site, which is something like new product, which in this case, it is average C. So that is where the knowledge and the concept of life cycle costing, as discussed earlier, they come into picture allowing the company to hold a long-term focus in managing and factoring the entire range of the life cycle costs, which including largely 
environmental costs into not only pricing decision, but also to some investment appraisal decision to determine the viability of such projects to take up. And finally, here is the appendix ones for your reference to be used in answering part A of the requirement. So these are some typical information on environmental cost pertaining to one of the project site A. The number which indicated as the red line are clearly different types of costs that has picked up as environmental cost. And you have to just group these six elements of cost into the four headings and make sure each of the classifications of the cost has to be well justified, explaining your reasoning why is the cost to be classified as such category. And finally, a simple mathematic of adding up the cost in each of the four headings that will be able to answer the first task in part A. And of course, not to mention what I have mentioned earlier on about the answer planning in responding to the advice to be given out in a broader aspect of applications of EMA, other than cost classification. So, with a demonstrations of a brief answer planning of these questions, I hope that will demystify the worries of what exactly to expect and the way to handle the questions pertaining to environmental management accounting in the context of APM examination. And with that, take care and goodbye.